In today's video, I'm gonna share five key tips to help you minimize your IBS or SIBO symptoms, so stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Amanda Malachewski. I'm a certified functional nutrition health coach and digestive and allergy detective. For weekly videos on how to make sense of all the diet and supplement advice for IBS and SIBO, please consider subscribing and be sure to hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. So I get asked a lot by my clients and viewers, what's the right diet for my IBS or SIBO symptoms? It's a fair question, right? In this video, I'm gonna share what I teach my clients to help them find the best diet for them to tame their bloating, constipation, and diarrhea. And I know that you can too, so let's get started. One key thing that people often overlook on their journey to find the right diet for their IBS or SIBO is to take a look at what they already know they react to or don't respond to well. Something I find over and over is that the clues about which foods you should or shouldn't eat is often included in the list of foods that you already know set you off. And if you're doing this assessment properly, this collection of foods often points towards one of the most likely diets that are going to help your IBS or SIBO symptoms. And in a minute, I'll discuss exactly what those are. Most people will pick which diet to use based on the symptoms that they're experiencing, but this doesn't really give you great information because it's just based on some arbitrary list that somebody else made up, and it doesn't really take into account the information that your body's already giving you. So ultimately, this information that your body's already telling you is absolutely king. It really is the most key information. Now, sometimes you don't have any idea at all what's causing your symptoms. And in these cases, I have my clients complete something called a food symptom diary for a minimum of five days. And the data that we collect there can often help point us in the direction of one of these therapeutic diets. I talk all about how to use a food symptom diary in this video here. So you can go check that out if that's something you need help with. The next thing to know is that there's generally a pretty short list of therapeutic diets that are most likely to be helpful for IBS or SIBO symptoms. And generally sticking with these before moving on to more complex or restrictive diets is a really good strategy. The framework that I teach my students is to start with removing junk foods or processed foods first, if those are in your diet. So, you know, junky candy, cookies, cake, soda, that kind of stuff, because those aren't generally healthy. And if you're having a health problem, they're maybe contributing to it. If those are already out of your diet, then I recommend focusing on the top three allergens, gluten, dairy, and sugar next. And then um, if those are already out of your diet, then you can consider checking out some of the therapeutic diets that are likely to help with IBS. And the two that I find most often are the things that my students need to focus on are the low FODMAP diet or the low histamine diet. In other words, do your due diligence with these low hanging fruit first and only if they don't work, then move on to more complex options like the autoimmune paleo diet or the keto diet or you know the carnivore diet is a really extreme example. I don't like recommending these diets initially because a lot of people actually experience much worse digestive problems on them. They're really diets to be reserved for when nothing else works. Ultimately, your goal is to make the least number of dietary changes possible, but still get the effect of improving your symptoms because we don't wanna have you eating a very limited diet for a long period of time. Okay, next point. Here's something that I feel should be totally and plainly obvious, but it's really not talked about so much. So consider yourself on the inside here with this point. So the point is, is that when you're trying a dietary change for IBS or SIBO symptoms, it's crucially important that you test that like an experiment as a scientist would, and then only continue with that dietary change if it's actually improving your symptoms. A lot of clients come to me saying, oh, I've been on the candida diet for three years, or I've been on a really strict low FODMAP diet for one whole year. And then I'll ask them, well, did that diet change make a big difference for you? And a lot of times they'll say, well, it made a little difference, but I don't really know. If you can relate to that, know that you're not alone, but also know that you shouldn't stay on a long-term elimination diet that's very limited unless it's really and truly helping your symptoms. Instead, you should get off of that restricted diet after a few weeks if you really haven't noticed much change. Or if it did help you, then you wanna do some careful food reintroductions to figure out which specific foods that you eliminated were the symptom triggers so that you can actually open your diet back up a little bit and not keep it really limited for a very long time. I'm curious to hear which elimination diet you might have stayed on maybe a little too long. Go ahead and tell me in the comments below. Okay, the next thing that I wanna say is that the truth about diets for IBS and SIBO are that your perfect unique diet might not fit neatly into a clean little box like the low FODMAP diet or the high histamine diet. 
a lot of people will ask me, well, what diet do you eat for your IBS and SIBO? And honestly, the answer to that question for you is that it's totally irrelevant because ultimately we wanna know what's right for your body. But I also will say that my particular diet that controlled my IBS and SIBO symptoms when they were really active was a combination of different factors. I reacted to a lot of different foods and they didn't necessarily fit neatly into one type of diet or another. So for example, I do react to some FODMAP foods, like I can't eat raw garlic and onions, but if they're cooked for me, they're fine. And I also tolerate lots of high FODMAP vegetables like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, no problem, and artichokes. <laughs> so what this highlights is, is that we wanna do the really diligent work of doing food reintroductions after we've done the elimination phase so that we can only keep avoiding the foods that we really, really need to. And just know that whatever you net out here with at the end isn't necessarily going to fit in a perfect little recipe. I see a lot of people running around being anxious and obsessive about their foods and trying to keep things really strict. And all of this can create a lot more anxiety for you. And that in and of itself makes digestive challenges worse. So we want to avoid that and only avoid the things that we absolutely need to, and just know that whatever that is for you may end up being a unique collection of foods that doesn't necessarily fit a preconceived diet. Lastly, it's also important to acknowledge that sometimes food isn't a mediator for you. In other words, sometimes there can be other underlying reasons for your symptoms that have nothing to do with food, even though I often do find that there are usually at least a few trigger foods for people. So if you really can't seem to find any foods that are triggering a problem for you, you may just need to investigate some other things like um, infections, for example, like getting tested for SIBO or running a GI map to look for underlying infections like H. pylori. Or there could be other reasons too, like hormones or who knows, right? So if you really can't find any foods that are connected to your symptoms, it's okay to move on to investigating other mechanisms. This was true for my client, Amy, who, you know, we tried a lot of different food changes and removals and reintroductions, and it just didn't really seem to matter what she was eating or what she wasn't eating. Her symptoms were kind of the same. So she had to look farther and out beyond food to understand the mechanism of what was happening with her symptoms. Need more help figuring out how to use gut healing diets for SIBO and IBS symptoms? Grab a copy of my Roadmap to Gut Recovery that maps out how to find your personalized plan for calm digestion. There's a link for that below this video. If you like this video, please click like and consider subscribing to my channel to get more videos like this. And go ahead and check out uh, some of these other videos that might be helpful for you in your journey. I've specifically curated them for you here. So I will see you next time.